Hello everyone, my name is Dave and welcome back to Diabetic Savvy, where we help you self-manage your diabetic experience through adapted recipes, food reviews, and more. Today is all about bread. Bread is one of those items that if you have diabetes is either drastically reduced or completely off limits. We think we've adapted a recipe that you're going to love, so hit subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we'll see you in a few seconds for our version of artisan bread. Bread. It's one of my most missed foods. There's not a single day that goes by that I don't think about it, am challenged by not having it, or just simply miss it. But commercial bread is too high in carbs as a simple carb product, too high in sugar, and way too many preservatives. And it's just one of those things that we typically have to control if we have diabetes. Today we're going to tackle classic artisan bread. We think we've adapted a recipe that drastically reduces the carbs, virtually eliminates all the sugar, and creates a bread that retains the texture, the chew, and that wonderful crust that we love from a classic old world bread. Classic bread has typically four ingredients, flour, water, salt, and yeast. With calorie counts roughly around 150 calories per serving, net carbs of over 30 grams, which is about twice the limit that I typically try to stay in with my recipes, and virtually no fiber, it's just one of those things that we have to eliminate being diabetic. Our recipe will change the ingredient set a little bit by using a hybrid flour, which we'll talk about in just one second, but more importantly, we'll cut the carbohydrates by half, roughly 15 net carbs uh, per serving, boost the fiber count by eight times, and lower the salt and lower the overall calorie count. Let's talk about the ingredients. Once again, we're using carbolose flour. I've talked about this flour a number of times in previous videos. This is a wheat derivative flour that's extremely low in carbs. The problem is though, that while it acts a lot like traditional flour, it needs a little bit of help, particularly if you're breaking breads. So for that reason, we're gonna use a bread flour as well. We're also gonna use xanthan gum. Now this is a plant-based binder, which is totally natural. It's also a thickening agent. Uh, we're gonna use this to help boost up some of what the carbolose flour lacks in terms of binding the flour together to create that elasticity and that traditional bread texture. We're also gonna use salt and we're gonna use yeast. Now, the amounts for the carbolose flour are 350 grams or roughly two and a thirds cups. For the bread flour, we're using two thirds of a cup of bread flour or, or roughly 150 grams. Two tablespoons of the xanthan gum, one half teaspoon of the yeast, two thirds of a tablespoon of salt, and I would typically recommend that you use either sea salt or kosher salt. If you use table salt, you want to reduce that to one half tablespoon because it's a finer grind. And then lastly, we want to use 400 grams of water or roughly two cups. The water needs to be about 95 to 100 degrees, nothing higher than that in order to activate the yeast, but not kill it. The last item that we want to use that's not shown here is a little bit of olive oil. We're going to be using that to grease the bowl so while the dough is proofing, it doesn't stick. Now one of the reasons that I love this bread so much is because it doesn't require a lot of steps and it doesn't require a lot of tools. Tools for this bread are really simple. You need either a large bowl or a container. We're going to be using a six quart container here with a lid. I just happen to have one of these around, but you certainly don't need this. You can also use a large bowl and plastic wrap to cover it. Also, we're going to be using a proofing basket. Now the proofing basket is going to give us the opportunity to finalize the dough, put, put on a really cool flour pattern. This is not required. Again, you can use a greased regular bowl of any kind as long as the dough doesn't stick. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. And the last thing that you need is a Dutch oven. Now, this is a cast iron Dutch oven. You certainly don't need this. You can use any sort of oven safe, heavy container that has a lid that's also oven safe because what you want to do is while you're baking that, that final dough, you want to trap a lot of that steam. That's going to create a lot of that crust texture that we like. Then a couple of the tools that we also want to use is this thing. Now, this is what they call a Danish dough hook or a Danish dough spatula. It's basically a wooden handle with a big giant wire looped around and it's used to actually stir the dough initially without getting your hands dirty. Now, I show this just because if you make a lot of bread, this is a tool that you absolutely must get. It will make your life so much easier. But for those of you that don't have that, we're gonna use the wooden spoon. So a spoon is totally fine here. 
The last thing that we want to talk about is a small bowl here to hydrate our yeast, and we'll talk about that in just a few seconds. One of the reasons I love this recipe is because it doesn't need, require a lot of containers. In fact, you can mix the dough all in one container. In this case, we're using this big giant six quart container I talked about. Next, we're gonna pour in our water. Now, again, this is about two cups by measure, 400 grams by weight, and the temperature of the water is really, really important. It needs to be about 95 to 100 degrees. You pour all that into the container. Now, before you do that, you wanna take out a couple of tablespoons or about an eighth of a cup to hydrate the yeast. That's what we're using that small bowl for. And now we're gonna hydrate the yeast. Simply pour it in, give it a good stir, making sure that all of the yeast is completely hydrated, and you can put that off the side for the next few minutes. Now, because we're using two different types of flours, we're gonna blend those flours together. And you can just use a spatula for this. Once you've mixed the carbolose flour and the bread flour together, now we can throw it on top of our water. Now you're certainly welcome to use your hands at this point, and for those of you that have seen my other videos, you know I'm a big, big fan of using my hands for a number of things, but you're also welcome to use a wooden spoon or that Danish dough hook that we talked about earlier. We're gonna use the spoon today. And you want to completely incorporate the water and the flour. So this is called an autolyse process. And it's basically pre-hydrating the flour and the water together. This creates a much better product at the end because you've given the flour the opportunity to absorb all of that water before we incorporate the salt and the yeast. And once we get to this feathery, sort of flaky stage, now we can actually start using our hands to knead it together. Now at this point, you want to get all the dough off the wooden spoon and you want to start mixing by hand. I'm going to encourage you, liberally conti and continuously wet your hand or hands during this process to keep the dough from sticking. You want to work the dough until it all comes together. Now the dough at this point is going to look a little dry. Adding another couple tablespoons of water at this point is not going to hurt the final product. So once we mix the dough to this point, we can cover it and set it aside for 30 minutes. So what you'll see now is that the dough has really relaxed. It's a lot softer. Now we want to mix in the water and yeast mixture along with the xanthan gum. Once that's to this point where there's no more liquid visible, now we can sprinkle over the salt. And then you want to incorporate that as well. So at this point, the xanthan gum, the salt, and the yeast, and the remaining water are fully incorporated. Now we're going to go on to what's called the proofing and the folding phase. This is going to take about four hours total. That's why this is an all-day bread. In the first hour and a half to two hours, you want to fold the dough twice. That'll give it some structure, give it some of that elasticity that we want. It's been about 10 minutes and we're going to give this dough its first fold. And again, feel free to wet your hands a little bit through this process so it doesn't stick. And essentially what I'm doing here, when I talk about folding the dough, I'm pulling the furthest part of the dough from the sides of the bowl and folding it inward. So if you imagine if you're taking uh, a fold from where the 12 o'clock would be on a clock and you pull it towards you, then you pull from the three o'clock side, the six o'clock side, the nine o'clock side, and so forth. Now, this is just gonna give the dough a little bit of structure as it starts to relax and the yeast starts to work. Okay, so we're pretty good. We're gonna put this aside for another hour, repeat the process again, and then pretty much all the hard work is done. Welcome back everyone, and it has been an hour since we let this dough relax and rise. So we'll give it a quick fold, and again, we're gonna do it the same way that we were before, pulling the dough from the outside in the center and rolling it in. We're gonna leave this in the container for about three more hours. We're gonna let it triple in volume, and then we'll be ready for the final proof. I'm gonna throw it in the oven. This dough looks absolutely amazing. We are in the home stretch of our proofing process. We're gonna roll it out, give it one more shape, put it in our proofing basket. I'm gonna talk about that in just a second, but we're doing really, really well with this. So hang tight while we get this ready, and we'll talk about the proofing process and our proofing basket. So as I mentioned earlier, 
This is a proving basket. You are not required to get one of these for this recipe. You can certainly use this in an oiled bowl with the uh, olive oil that we talked about. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and use this proving basket today. The only thing you have to do with a traditional proving basket is give it a little bit of flour so that the uh, dough doesn't stick and it creates that great design. And we're just gonna sprinkle this into the bowl like so. And as we sprinkle this around, we're just gonna make sure that it gets all over the sides. And now it's just a matter of turning out the dough. When you take the dough out, the top has really become the bottom and the bottom is gonna become the top. So you wanna tighten up this ball. Essentially, you can see what my hands are doing. You wanna tighten up this ball by essentially scooping your hands underneath the dough and kind of pulling in and meeting your hands and spinning so that you tighten up the top of this, of this bread. You want to do this really delicately to make certain that you don't disturb or break apart any of the bubbles that you already have working within the dough. In this goes. Now we're going to leave that dough, we're going to cover it and leave the dough for another hour and we're back. During that time we're going to preheat the oven to 475 degrees. The one thing that you want to preheat with that is your Dutch oven. Now, this has been rising for another hour. It's about gotten another, I don't know, 30% bigger than what it was when we put it in here. So we're going to very simply just roll this dough out onto the counter. A couple things I'm going to do, just a little bit of additional flour on top. I like that for a little design work anyway. A little bit on the knife and we're just going to score this. Dough is now in the oven baking for 30 minutes. Once the 30 minute time has passed, we're gonna take the lid off and bake for another 15 minutes. So I'll see. Oh man, that looks beautiful. We're gonna let this stay in the oven for another 15 minutes to get a little bit more color on it, but this has turned out really well. A long day of baking has come to an end. Let's pull the bread out and see how she looks. And that looks amazing. All right, the moment of truth. It's been 15 minutes, the bread is sufficiently cooled. Let's cut into it and take a look. So there you have it. Low carb, low salt, sugar-free, diabetic-friendly artisan bread at home. I hope you tried this recipe. Leave comments, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and tell us what you want us to do. I've already gotten a lot of feedback and a lot of support from the community that we've already started. Thank you so much for everything you're doing for us. Thanks again for watching.